Hey there people, I recently coded a small program that uses a genetic algorithm to schedule operations and I wanted to share it with you guys, it uh, seems to be working very well. So this is a short tutorial slash proof of concept in which we will have a look at how the program works and then have a look at a few examples, but I won't go into too much detail. As the title suggests, I have used Python as a programming language. Okay, let's go. First, let's start with a few quick words about how the genetic algorithm works in general. We start with a randomly generated population of solutions, and these are solutions to the given problem. It can be any problem such as operation scheduling, traveling salesman person, arranging decks in a, in a truck, or anything like that. The next step is to evaluate each of those solutions. This means to come up with a way of saying how good each solution is, does it conform to the constraints, does it achieve the final goal, and by doing so we assign a number which represents the overall fitness of that particular solution. In this case, the higher the number, the better the solution. The next step is to sort all solutions within the population in descending order. So the best one is at the top and the worst one is at the bottom. Why do you want to do that? Because the next step is to reduce the population by removing the worst solutions. We do this by simply discarding them from the population. In this way, we continue working with only the good ones. Then each of those solutions is converted to what I here refer to a genome. This is simply a string of characters or data or anything like that. But the important part is that this is a well-defined string in terms of length and in terms of segments. And after having the genomes, we start breeding the population. This means taking two random genomes and combining them into a new one. You can do this in various kinds of ways, but generally it's a good idea to keep this uh, a random way of combining those genomes. We do this n number of times until we have enough new genomes. And then each of those new ones can be converted back to a solution. In this way, we have created a new population of solutions, which is not the same one as the one we started with, but is based on the best solutions of the previous generation. From here, the cycle continues in the same fashion, so the next step would be to score the new population. But the important takeaway lesson here is that the average score of the population has increased. The random one we started with had an average score of minus 27.9, but the new one we derived has an average score of minus 20.1. And this is the purpose of the algorithm. It is to keep combining good solutions so they can pass their good features between each other and thus overall the population improves and hopefully after a certain amount of cycles we will end up with a good solution. Two key things here. First, how do I represent and store a schedule programmatically? Remember, this is only the schedule itself, meaning the final solution, and not the definition of the problem. To do this, I use two arrays, or lists as they are called in Python. One list contains the starting time of the operations, and the other one contains the resource IDs that the operations are assigned to. And the index of the list corresponds to the operation IDs, so in this case, the first operation will have an ID of 0, it will start at time 13, and it will be assigned to resource 1. As you might have already guessed, in this simple example, I have 5 operations that need to be scheduled on 2 resources. The other key thing is how do I convert a schedule to a genome? I do this by having a precise structure of the string. It is divided into segments. First, a 30 position segment to store the operation start time, then one position segment to store the resource ID, 
The pattern repeats itself for all operations starting from the first one and ending with the last one. And this makes merging of the genomes easy because they have equal length and equal structure. Segments store a number by counting the number of ones inside them. So in this case, the start time is constrained by the segment structure, but it is also initialized in the beginning of the program to be as high as the longest schedule would need. Also worth mentioning is that this particular implementation has the ability to define operation relations. There are four types of operation relations, start to start, start to end, end to start, and end to end. The most common type is end to start, where the start of the second operation relates to the end of the first operation, meaning that the second operation cannot start until the first one has completed. There is also the option to specify minimum and maximum offsets, whereby the second operation is allowed to start no later than the maximum offset and no sooner than the minimum offset. Okay, let's have a look at the code of the program. So I start by defining the problem itself, plus some parameters for the algorithm. Then I define a instance of the class, and then I add as many random solutions to the population as the population size implies. Uh, then it's just a matter of calling the breed population function n number of times, in this case 50. As simple as that, uh, so let's have a look at the breed population function. So if you recall the slide from earlier, we start by scoring whatever population we have. We then uh, sort using the score and in descending order. This is just a print of the current best solution. We then remove or discard all the bad solutions. We then calculate the genome for each uh, member of the population. And then we do a loop the same number of times as the population size. We choose two numbers of the population at random. We, we take the genome of those members and we merge the two genomes by calling the cross two genomes function, which will return a string. And then it's just a matter of uh, passing that string to the genome two values function, which will return two lists, the start times and resources. We then save the newly generated uh, solution. Uh, each solution uh, is represented by a uh, dictionary, which has four elements. Star times, which is a list. Resources, which is a list. Score, which is an integer. Genome, which is a string. We clear the existing population, add the new one. The breed uh, population function returns true. And then it's just a matter of doing the same thing over and over again. Here I have defined a quick example consisting of five operations, which have four relations between them. And this is actually how the problem uh, looks in its optimal solved state. And on the bottom left corner, you can see how the start times list would look like. So let's plug in this into the genetic algorithm and see how it goes. So we have five operations, each of which has a duration of five. We also define two resources. And here we define the operation relations, which is defined as from operation three to operation zero from 0 to 4, from 1 to 4, and from 1 to 2. As a start, I will define population size of 20 and the survival rate of 0 0.6, which means that the top 60% of the population will survive on each cycle. And if I run this,
So as you can see, the score starts very low, but then improves. This is actually was not a very good run, so let's try again. This one is much better. So I'm trying to find a zero. And just from previous experience, I know that if I change the, if I increase the population size, and if I decrease the survival rate, I should get much better results. Oh, there's one. So this is an optimal solution. And the start times looks like 5, 10, 21, 0, 12. Which is exactly as how uh, we saw it on the example. Let's try a few more runs. There's even more solutions here. Uh, what happens if I change the resource from 2 to 1? Well, in this case, because we have concurrent operations, you will never have a perfect solution. Therefore, we should never see a 0 in the output. But let's give it a try. Yep, indeed, it shouldn't be possible to have a zero. So the next thing is to change. So if I increase uh, these two relationships and increase by three, I will end up with this second example. And in this case, it should be possible to find the optimal solution uh, using only one resource. So let's go ahead and change that. Resource counts to one. Try one more time. Okay, here's the first one, here's the second one. So this should be an optimal solution, which is 5, 10, 21, 0, 15. And this is 5, 10, 21, 0, 15. So the difference between the two models is the uh, relationship between operation 0, 4, 1, 4. Therefore, the change in the solution is the start time of the fourth operation, so only this last bit. So that's it for a short video like this one. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and please let me know what you think down in the comments.